In a previous Fusion 360 tutorial, I showed you how to model this 3D printed clamp. But it's just a clamp. There's no way to attach other objects to the clamp. Fusion 360 is a parametric modeling program, so we can go back in our design history and modify this clamp now that we have a base form. That way we can make many different designs from the same original. Make sure that you activate the clamp component. When I click this circle under the clamp component, it only shows the design timeline for the clamp. I can then roll back in time before I chamfer the edges right here. This allows the edges to be chamfered later when I add features to it. I can select Create Sketch, select the side here, press P. This will bring in all of the edge lines. Then I can select all those lines and select the line type to be construction lines. This makes them dotted and they won't interfere with any extrusions. Then I can draw a rectangle. Use the coincident constraint to make the rectangle coincident with this point, and then coincident with this line. And then we want the top line of the rectangle to be tangent. Next, I can press E, and I can extrude this rectangle a distance of all. Now I have a flat surface that I can mount something to, but I need a way to add fasteners. To do that, I can insert a nut from McMaster Car. So select McMaster Car. Under the insert menu, select nut, inch, or metric, square nuts, then one quarter twenty. This is a very common thread in the US. And then if you see here, all of these heights are the same. So we'll select one of them. You can get a 3D step file, and you can do a step with threads or no threads. So I'm going to go ahead and use no threads because I don't need the threads. But if you need the threads for whatever reason, you can use this 3D step. And then once it's here, just select download. Now we have our threadless nut right here. I'll leave it where it is and just select OK. Now I want to add a joint to this so that way it's positioned. Select joint under assemble and then select the top face. And we want the center point of the nut. And sometimes it's just a little tricky to get, but you want the center. And then we can select the top face of our clamp. So it's centered on the clamp, but we don't necessarily want it here. We want to offset it. So if I look from the top, I can offset it this direction, maybe 15. And then I probably want it to come this way a little bit. So I'll come this way, 15 as well. And then I need it to go down. So if I go down, negative five, if I just hide the body right here, you can see. At the top here is where the joint is. So we have five millimeters of bolting force right there. So that should be fine. And then I press OK. Next, create a sketch right on the side of the clamp. So I'll create a sketch right here. And I need to project in the bolt. So press P, hide the body of the clamp. Then I can project in the bolt. But make sure you select bodies so you get a nice square on the outside and press OK. I can highlight all these lines just like before and then make them construction lines. Next, I'll draw a rectangle around these lines. And I can dimension from the sides my offset. And if the nut is confusing, just go ahead and hide it right now. And then now I can see these lines. So I'll press D. And right here, I'll say 0.1. And then so I can change these all at the same time, I'll go ahead and select the point one there. You can also use a user parameter if you have something for fit, and then just type that in. But this way I can change only one dimension if I don't have enough clearance for the nut. So since it's a 3D print and point one seems awfully close, I'll go ahead and change this to point two right away. And that'll give it a little bit of play to slide in. Then I'll finish my sketch, press E, and now I'm going to extrude. I need to go backwards, but how far? So I see the nut here, and I need to go past the nut. So if I look to the side, I want to go past the nut some amount. So I definitely want to go back 15, but notice that I can't, it's giving me a warning because I can't see the body of the object. So if I go here, it's cutting both the nut and the clamp. 
So under the cut operation, objects to cut, undo the nut, and then the nut will come back. So if I say OK, now we can see that we've cut past the nut. And if there's not enough space, we can always edit this extrude to make sure that there's enough space. Next, create a sketch on the top here. And we need to project in the circle of the nut. So once again, hide the body of the clamp. And then since there's no threads, it's really easy to select the circle. I press OK. And then I'll draw a circle. And I just need to be bigger than the circle. So this is a quarter inch. And then I'll just go out to the outside here. And it looks like seven millimeters will work really well. So I'll type 7.25 just to give it a little bit of clearance for the bolt to fit through. And once again, we have two lines. We have the projection line and this line. While not necessary, you can select the projection line, press X, and then turn it into a construction line or a dotted line. That way, when you select a profile, it selects the whole thing. So if I press E, it selects that whole profile. And then I can go down, and we want to go past this object. So if we go extent type to object, and I click the bottom of the nut, then I can bring back the body. We can see where it's cutting. But I want some clearance for the bolt to go past the nut. So I can offset this by a negative 4. So negative 4 went up, positive 4 goes down. Depending on which direction you click on your profile, that can be different. So this gives us a little bit of place for the bolt to go through. And then I'll press OK. But I don't want to do that yet because the objects to cut are going to be the body of the nut in the clamp. So just the clamp and press OK. So now we should have a nice place to slide in our nut. And then if I go past one step on the timeline, notice that it chamfers this edge. I can hide the nut and then select Modify Chamfer and select these interior edges so I can chamfer all of these. And then there's the circle on the bottom. So that's all of them. And then I can type 0.5. And now I have a place to put a captive nut. But I want one on the other side. So we have this right on the middle. But if you didn't, I could construct a midplane. So just to show you in case your sketch is not perfectly centered on the origin, if I select this face and this face, it creates a midplane. Again, if yours is on the origin, this is not necessary, but just shows you another way of doing it. Then create mirror. And instead of bodies, I want to select features. What features? Well, I want to select that last chamfer. And then I want to select both of these extrudes. So I have the extrude that made the hole for the bolt and the chamfer. And if I select this mirror plane, now I have this on the other side and I don't have to do all that work. And then press OK. I can go ahead and hide the construction plane. Now I have a way that I can clamp things to my clamp with fasteners. This uses a common quarter inch 20 fastener. You could also use an M6 or an M5 fastener, depending on what you have available. Go ahead and go all the way to the end. And now we're ready to 3D print our clamp. Happy 3D modeling.